welcoming our speaker and our mentor and our captain for this cohort matthew so a uh, huge round of emoji applause uh, in air meet for matthew uh, he'll be uh, leading this entire cohort and will be with you uh, to ensure that uh, you become masters of product analytics matthew is the interim head of bi at penta and he was previously the co-founder of cook eat uh, he is in the analytics space since more than a decade now and has been leading end to end projects for over 50 companies which is massive so lots of learnings to unpack here and probably no one better than matthew to teach you all about her analytics and help you master it in the coming few weeks why are we on this ship why does product analytics 101 exist well this course there's two reasons why we came up with this course the first one i'm very passionate about helping educate others in the data analytics space so for years and years and years many of us have probably noticed there's not a lot of content out there, right? It's very hard for someone to get into data analytics in the first place. Not only product analytics specifically, but data analytics in general is a very broad field. And it's very hard to just go to university and become a digital analyst or become a data engineer, right? It's very difficult because it's a combination of many different types of disciplines kind of interwoven together, right? If you think about like a, a position like a UX researcher, like I mentioned before, that person needs to understand psychology, but that person also ha has to understand technical things like JavaScript, because they maybe need to run experiments and they need to understand how to take surveys. So they need to understand qualitative data. So there's so many different aspects that flow into different positions in data analytics that it's very hard to just study it the classical way. And so this course is meant to help all of you level up your game and understand product analytics better. And I'm very passionate about education. It's the reason why I started streaming on Twitch. It's the reason why I co-founded a uh, small educational uh, nonprofit here in Switzerland as well called Analytics Camp. It's the reason why I mentor three or four people since years because i'm very passionate about sharing knowledge with others i think that is one of the most important things that we can do is to help others learn and of course in the process we learn ourselves which is also why i'm doing this the second thing is of course as aditya mentioned this has been asked for in the community for a very long time this has been a really hot topic product analytics that doesn't bankrupt you. A lot of the courses out there are very expensive. I am the author of another course from another place that costs a three digit number, right? And I understand that that's not accessible to everyone. So I think it's great that product and product folks really approached me and said, listen, why don't we do a course together that we can offer for free or at low cost to people? And I said, absolutely, let's do it. Five things that hopefully you will have a fundamental grasp on when you exit this course in four weeks. The first is you will understand product analytics as a topic. And this is not a small thing, actually. It's actually quite a, a critical thing, which we will talk about today specifically. What is product analytics actually? Because of people, a lot of people throw this word around, not necessarily knowing the differentiation of product analytics and other analytics disciplines. Two is that you will understand the best practices in product analytics to apply to your overall measurement plan. And we will also explain what a measurement plan is. Many of you might be wondering what a measurement plan is. The third thing is you will be able to answer analytical questions with a product analytics tool. It doesn't really matter which one, but you will be able to apply that knowledge no matter which tool you use, whether it's Amplitude or one of the other 50 tools out there, you will be able to answer analytical questions. You will be able to explain and analyze user journeys and build cohort analysis. Even without a tool, you will understand how to build a cohort analysis from scratch, from the bottom, and it's actually not that hard. Trust me. Once you understand it, it's very easy. And the last thing is that you will understand really, really key metrics that are thrown around all the time in the SaaS industry, like customer lifetime value, CLV, or churn rate, or retention, and things like that. You will understand all of those terms, and you will basically look like a genius. This is, in my opinion, the big picture about product analytics, right? So it's about applying best practices, which we will look at what those are, in data analytics to surface unique insights about users, product usage, 
and the business in order to take key decisions. So there's a really important aspect about this quote. And this quote is from myself, which is why it's not referenced. It's not referencing anyone else. I came up with this definition. What do you think about this definition? So I see a lot of emoji reactions with thumbs up and clapping. So it, it seems that this definition is, is resonating with most of you, right? So obviously we will get into more detail about best practices, but you can already see that product analytics is dealing with not only product. It's not only about the product. It's about two other very key aspects, which is users and the business. And guess what? All three of those things are interlinked together. They are inseparable. When you think about your product, you are thinking about users. Who's using your product? Of course, users are using it. The product does not stand on its own. It's not a sign on the side of the road that just sits there. Your product is there when people are using it. And that becomes the experience, is the combination of the user and the product. And of course, your business is behind the product. They are intertwined together. And that is why product analytics is a discipline of basically connecting the thread between all three of these components and figuring out the best things to do with the information that you get. So unique insights or nuggets of information or however you want to call them. It's about taking that information and using it to make decisions. Way more. Product analytics is a data discipline. So of course, product analytics, we need to talk about data. I love data. Who else loves data? I see all the hearts and thumbs up. Everybody loves data, of course. Why else would you be here if you didn't love data like me? Product analytics is a discipline that is integrated across the entire data stack. What do I mean by that? When you think about how data comes to be in the first place, then you understand that it has to be collected. We have to capture that data somehow. This is what this course is all about. It's about taking you through this data stack in a very simplistic way, of course. Like this is not, this is not like a technical breakdown of a data stack over four weeks. We have to process that data somehow. We have to make it from the raw line by line availability that we normally get. We have to turn it into something. We have to store it somewhere. Then we need to model it. We need to kind of change it so it meets our expectations. Maybe we need to uh, make a PDF out of something. Maybe we need to make a cohort analysis. And finally, there's an output, right? Maybe it's just a CSV export. Maybe it's a beautiful dashboard. Maybe it's a cohort analysis. Maybe it's an email to someone Monday morning, 9 a.m., telling them to start a campaign. All of those things can be outputs from product analytics. That's why it's so amazing to work in product analytics and to use it in your business. Do we need product analytics? Like now that we know it's useful and that everyone should be doing it, you know, do we really need it? Let's consider the following statements. And these are, in a way, these are basically facts. Okay. These are my personal facts, but I think that they are facts. Okay. Acquiring users for your product is more costly than keeping them. Okay. I think everybody knows that by now, but it should be obvious. Trying to get people onboarded, trying to bring someone in to use your product is going to cost you more time and money than it will to keep them there, to keep them happy. And how do you think that you're going to keep them happy? By understanding what goal they're trying to reach. And how do you understand what goal they're trying to reach? Boom, product analytics. There you go. Problem solved. Number two, designing features of your product based on gut feeling is dangerous and risky. And honestly, it's like so 2001, okay? Nobody does this anymore. Nobody should be doing this anymore. Do you think a multinational company like Zapier is building their product because some CEO says, Pooh, I don't know. I mean, I think we should build this in a boardroom. I mean, this, that's awful to think that that is a business practice of today in some companies. It's honestly a real problem to think that some people are building their products this way. So if you want to design features of your product based on data, you need to capture that data. 
how are you going to capture that data? Boom, product analytics is your answer. Number three, assessing the financial impact of your product decisions is crucial to the longevity of your company. Now, this is looking at like the boat and looking at the horizon three to four days sailing away, if we look at the boat analogy, right? Of course, a lot of people are not interested in what's going to happen in three to four days from now. But in a business context, what's going to happen to your company three to four years from now? Very important. Because your business is not just here for one day. Your business should be here ultimately forever. So if you want to assess the financial impact of your product decisions, then you need to actually measure that impact about what you did. If you decide to kill a feature, you got to measure what impact that had. How do you measure that? Boom, product analytics. So it's obvious that we need product analytics, right? And I think all of you are convinced that we need product analytics because otherwise over 600 of you would not be here right now. It's very simple. You would not be sitting here if you didn't think we need product analytics. So I don't need to convince you, but you need to convince everybody else. You need to convince your dad. You need to convince your mom. You need to convince your sister, your brother, your kids if you have them. You need to convince everyone in your company that you need product analytics. And you can use these three facts to do that. But they will tell you, prove it. And that's what this course is about.